Captain Matt, Boater Secret Weapon, and today we're talking about a big controversy. Should you pull your tube from the ski tow bar on your pontoon? Some people say, never do it. Some people say, I do it all the time and never had an issue. Well, I'm going to give you some truths and I'm going to give you some recommendations um, as we go through. You've seen the, the warning signs. Don't pull 700 pound total weight. Do not pull multiple skiers, wakeboarders. Don't pull tubes, towbows, or boats from these ski tow bars. There's different warning labels, different weights on different um, designs. What do you do? What do you do if you're not sure? Well, if you look at it, pulling tubes, pulling skiers, you're like, I don't get it. They're just skimming across the water. You know, I'm only 200 pounds. Um, you know, the, there's only three kids on there and they, they weigh total 150 pounds. What's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal. You can see this is my brother and I double skiing. Um, and, uh, you know, total, you've got probably 400 pounds back there behind the boat. I'm the one on the right. Um, and, uh, the tubes, Hey, once you get going, we got maybe 150 pounds back there on the tube. What's the big deal? Well, this is part of the issue. When you're getting up, if you're not a, a really good skier um, or you're a little bit on the larger side like me um, and you're possibly skiing behind a, a boat that's barely enough power to get you up, they're not just going to zip you up like you would if you were behind a Mastercraft or something. There's a lot of force being pulled. Yes, I'm only 220 pounds, but when I'm on that ski and I'm being pulled up by a 150 horsepower tri-tune, I am dragging, and that is creating a ton, a ton of pull on that tow bar. Have I snapped one? Never. Have I been pulled on the tow bar? Absolutely, I have. But that's the drag. But here's where the big problem comes in, and this is why I don't pull a tube from the tow bar when I'm running um, pontoons, is because, look, it looks like, especially these chariot-style tubes when you're pulling them like this, it looks like, hey, we're just going across the top of the water. But what happens is you get that nose dive. You get some white water that starts coming over. Maybe somebody's feet put a little bit of weight on the front of the, the tube. And now once a little bit of water comes over, boom, it's just going to nose dive. And think how much force that's going to be. That's going to be a 1,000, 2,000 pounds of pressure pulling almost instantly right on that tow bar. Now, I've had this happen. So I can tell you for a fact, it will and it does happen, especially when you're going slower. There's some things I'm going to share with you on how to avoid it in just a little bit, but it doesn't take much to get a little bit of wave to start coming over. And then once there's some water coming over, that whole thing will nosedive and you're just scooping tons and tons and tons of water. Plus you're going at, you know, it's usually going to happen at a slow speed. It's not going to go at 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour and up. But when you're 10 miles an hour, five miles an hour, that's when it's going to happen. And this is going to be the damage. These are actual photos of tow bars that have busted because of this exact issue. The welds will break. They'll crack. They'll, you'll see the welds cracking right there. They'll just rip it straight off. I couldn't find my favorite photo where it was just, it was the whole tow bar was just totally bent down, smashing the, uh, smashing the cowling of the motor. Check out the boater bootcamp if you're a newer boater. But one of the things that matters is the design of your, of your tow bar and the weight capacity. If you look up here in the top right, this is one of them that was broken on the images um, that you saw right here. You can see it's that style. This type of tow bar, all of that pressure, it, it doesn't have, it's not using a lot of leverage. The engineering is not great. This one is a little bit better. That tow, these bases are a little bit wider. This one right here, you've got the angle. So it's already pulling down and you've got these curvy legs. I'm not smart enough to know if that's helpful or not helpful design. But then you've got this one here, which this is um, going to be rated to like to 1,500 pounds. And they say you're fine to put towables back there. But you can see how wide it is and how it's pulling from the back. So all that force is being transferred down um, because it's a nice wide stance. Just like in sports, you want that wide stance so you got more stability. This is going to give it more strength. So that's the first thing is what type of tow bar do you have back there? If you have this, no way I'm putting the towable back there. When I told you that my Mabel, the big Mabel nosedive, our tow bar looked like this. It was on a Sweetwater pontoon. So I tied it off. 
on the boat, on the little eye bolts on the tube. It dove and it was fine. Um, had that happened being up here, it would have been a disaster and I would have been replacing a thousand dollar tow bar. The next thing you can do, these guys are having a great time, is put one of these booster balls on it so that it keeps that rope from dipping down into the water, getting caught up in a wave and starting that water coming over. The other thing that you can do is you can see this tube is a little bit deflated. Make sure that your tubes are pumped all the way up as full as you can get them. And uh, that's going to help them keep that buoyancy up and less likely to sink down. The other thing that you can do is have people lean back when you're starting out and when you are slowing down, make sure they lean back. It's most important with smaller people, big people like me, I get on the Mabel and my 220 pounds is going to lean that sucker back and do a wheelie like these guys are. But when you put my two kids on it and it nosedive when they were three and five, uh, washed them off the off the big Mabel, and um, you, you could just feel it just put the boat to a stop. It, it sucked up so much water and was was uh, scooping it up. But make sure that they lean back. That's going to help from it ever catching. So if you do those things, the other thing I find, it's these chariot styles that are most common because it kind of scoops it in. The belly tubes, it can happen, it will happen, but it usually takes a wave coming over or it takes some, some weight on that front of it that's going to make it nosedive. Um, and they can happen as well. So hopefully that helps answer that question for you because it really depends on your tow bar. It depends on the weight of the people. It depends on the type of tube that you have. Hopefully that's helpful. Check out the Voter Boot Camp. Give this a thumbs up if you found this valuable. Uh, best boat captain in the water if you need better control of your boat and handling trailer like a pro. Tow water sports with confidence. We talk about this exact thing and much, much more. Confident coastal boater. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.